It's a hot day. I just got out of the shower. My hair's wet. T-shirt's probably wet. So perfect time to make a video, right? Um, but the reason I'm making a video is because someone asked me a question on a YouTube video I posted a couple of weeks ago, which I forgot about, but it was a really cool question. And the question was, um, can you change the background color of a slicer when a value from that slicer is selected? And the reason the question came was because the video that I posted was about changing the background colors of visualizations to like transparent. Link the video here. Um, and like I say, really cool question. And I wanted to play around with it a little bit and see what I could come up with. And um, yeah, I think the idea works really well. There's lots of use cases for it. And what you're gonna use it for primarily is of course showing the user that there is a slicer applied which there are already ways of doing. Um, but I think this is um, a really clean way of, of doing that. And certainly one that I would like to use in my report. So I go to it and see if it's possible. And if we quickly look at what I have on my screen here, you can see that I have a bunch of slices. And uh, yeah, so if I click on this slicer and I select a value, you can see that this slicer changes the background color. Um, and that's very cool. Um, so the question is, did I do it? It seems like I did achieve it. It seems like I did make the background color of that slicer change when a value was applied. But I have to be very honest, I have totally cheated because look, here is the grand reveal. I actually didn't do it. Um, I used a shape. So complete classic Power BI workaround. I'm not a huge fan of putting visualizations on top of visualizations to achieve, um, yeah, something that I want to achieve, like be it visually or, or whatever. Um, but in this case, because it's so cool, um, I'm kind of at peace with it. So first of all, how did I do it? And why did I do it that way? So how I did it, very straightforward. Exactly the same as the, um, the DAX measure that I used in my previous video but with just the color changed. So here we have if is filtered. Again, I love is filtered. Um, my measure is called highlight fitness. So if is filtered, so if this column in this table is filtered, so if this is filtered, then give me this color. And if not, then give me this color. So as we can see here, that's what I have when I apply this slicer because I've taken that measure and I've applied it to this shape. So I go on my background, I go on my conditional formatting button, I just select field value, and then I go and I search for that measure, which in this case is highlight fitness. I go okay, and that switches it on. So why didn't I do it in the slicer itself? Let's have a look at that. I go here and I do the same thing. So background on, and I go to my conditional formatting button, and I'm gonna choose again, the exact same measure that we just created. The highlight fitness, okay, and now it's switched on. So I do the same thing, and I go 50, and it doesn't change. The background color of the slicer isn't changing. Um, however, if I just do a little bit of a reveal here, and I use this um, slicer, if I do the same thing here, background color on, and we use the conditional formatting, sorry. Again, field value, and I go highlight. So what's gonna happen now, you'll see, is that does work. So what we can see is what's happening is this one, the slice that I'm using to slice, yeah, isn't filtered right? Because the slicer itself isn't filtered. The slicer is filtering other visualizations. Um, now I did try other measures to try to achieve that. So instead I tried to use things other than if is filtered and um, wasn't still wasn't working. Of course, from my side, it could be a misunderstanding of what we need to write in that measure to apply the filter. But basically, I couldn't get it to work as I wanted to. So I kind of cheated. And as I say, I just went, okay, so I can't get my slicer itself 
to change. So all I need to do is I need to switch the background off on my slicer, put a shape on top. Sorry, that's not true. Put a shape behind the visualization that I want and then put the slicer on top. So now it looks as though it's the slicer itself, which is highlighted when I select a value here. So go back here, go boink, take it off, it's white, and then apply a slicer value, and it appears that the slice is highlighted. Again, I'd rather come up with a solution that literally just highlights the slicer background, but I really do think it looks very cool, and I think it's a very helpful thing to have in your reports, especially when we consider things such as if we're using something that isn't actually shown in the visualization itself. So if we have name and I click on a name here, you can see pretty clearly that there's a slice for apply because there's only two values. Andy Carroll, that's his name. He plays for this team. So it's already sliced through. So you maybe you don't need it on every single slicer, um, though you can argue you should do anyway, um, or you could do it anyway. But when you're looking at things where you actually can't see that inside the visualization. So that value doesn't exist, that dimension doesn't exist within the X axis or the Y axis or whatever. It's harder to know when something has been filtered. Like it's really hard to know just by looking at it that the slicer has been applied there. So in that case, it's really nice just to have something here, which very quickly shows you, look, boom, slicer is used on this particular slicer. Cool. Um, because I kind of cheated, uh, I did also think, okay, then let's try to do something else a little bit cooler to make up for the fact that I cheated. And I thought it could be cool, the potential to change the color dependent on the value that you selected. So there's probably fewer use cases for that, um, but it's still nice to, to have. And I thought you could do that two different ways. So if I just take a, a pre-prepared measure here because of my hatred of typing and I create my new measure, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use switch and I'm gonna say, dependent on the value, show me a certain color, yeah? So here for the first three, I've taken the same color cause I'm just being lazy, but let's just try and mix it up a little bit. So zero, zero, FF, zero, zero. And then here, let's do zero, 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 FF, whatever. So now I'm saying not if is filtered, but rather if the selected value is zero, then this color, if it's 0.25, because we're dealing with percentages, so that's 25%, then this, 50% this, 75% this, and 100% this color. So we can then specify what color we want it to be, depending on the value that you have selected. Um, yeah, so let's see how that looks. Let's see if it works, first of all. Will it work? is always the question. So obviously I need to just move that back again because I need access to my shape because I cheated. And I'm going to go and instead of saying highlight fitness, I'm going to say highlight fitness two. Okay. And then, oh, I did it on the border instead of the background. Nah. At least we can see it works, but we'll do it on the background as well. Yeah. So now we have it on the border and the background, which is a good point because you should do that anyway, otherwise you'll have like a weird color. So highlight fitness, and uh, I've got 100% is that, and then that. So we can see, obviously these are like, you know, obnoxiously bright colors, you wouldn't want to use those. Um, but yeah, it works. So another way of, of doing that, it, it's probably more straightforward just to have your is it filtered? Yes or no, this color or that color. Um, but in situations where you have a color that represents something, it might be cool to say, okay, this value has been selected and this value always has this color. And um, you, you can match those two things together. That's quite cool. And I suppose a third way of doing it would be to assign them like a numerical value, say zero through to, um, in this case, what, five, whatever. Um, one, nope, four. So I'm gonna assign them all a numerical value. And what that might allow us to do is to use like, um, 
rather than a rule, we can use a, um, a color gradient. So if I now go here and I go back to this and I go my background color, I can say use a color scale, color scale. It's two and I go, if it's zero, then give me white. And if it is, what do we have Four. Give me that. Okay. So now I'm going to say zero, which is white, 25, 50. That's quite cool. Um, so yeah, we're basically giving it a color scale. So instead of saying, so there are the three options really. We can have yes or no, just color on, color off. We can specify a color or we can give like um, a color gradient depending on the value that we've assigned. I would suggest that the first and the third option are quite nice to have because they're probably the easiest to set up rather than assigning a color, but every, or they all have a use case. And at the end of the day, what we have achieved is that, um, we have a background color for our slicer when a value is applied kind of because I cheated, but I hope it helps. And I hope you uh, manage to use this in a report as ever. If you find a better way of doing it, um, let me know in the comments because the comment of the previous video was very helpful because it led to this. Um, yeah. And of course, as ever, if you could subscribe, that would be wonderful and much appreciated. Thank you very much and goodbye.